The jackpot really weekend rather continues with the race number five at Tauterwood. Betsa Kenilworth being the first leg off the carryover jackpot. It is at 250,000 Rand in the pool. And the come race time uh, that will be expected to reach a million or if uh, not more. Two jackpots and the second one, please take notice. This is a 10 race program, starts in race number seven. And then we round it all off. We have a feature, and it is a long standing listed feature, the Somerset 1200. Well, to take us through our preview to the exotics is Mr. Marie once again. And there may be a remote contribution from our friend, Mr. Burrows. Race two is the first leg of the bipod, but before we even discuss horses, it is discussing you, sir. How are you today? I'm very good, thank you, Cecil. How thank are you doing? Thank you so, so much. Looking forward to uh, Sunday racing? I am. I am. Take note, there is some rain being forecast for mm -hmm. Saturday. Mm -hmm. So we're doing this uh, on Friday yes. morning. We put in the dark as to the track conditions. But in the opening leg of the bar pot, I've gone with two runners. One of them is a five. No, the one in three. <laughs> <laughs> the one in three. Uh -huh. Captain West, lovely debut. What can we say about the one world? Yes. Um, just got touched off in debut. Uh, first four past the line were well clear of the balance of the field on that occasion. Um, yeah, he could certainly back it up with a f another promising effort. And then number one, Bagatelli Flash. Yes. Really disappointed me last time out. I actually thought he was going to give Unbaldi a run for his money and he was well beaten. That was over a thousand. On his penultimate start, Kai Boy. Mm. <coughs> Excuse me, Cecil. Cowboy, I thought that was a lovely effort. Um, and I had a look at his breeding. Uh, Cecil, his dam is related to the Derby winner, Hero's Honor. Mm -hmm. So maybe he was trapped for speed last time out. I'm giving an, uh, him another chance. I think he's way better than that effort. So save fruit numbers one and three. Hero's Honor, that was Mark Khan for Gary Alexander, and the ownership was Avernus. Correct. Jeez, the great <laughs> matter, huh? There. That is the bipod, one and a three for Mr. Marie in the first leg of the bipod at Hollywood Bets Kenilworth, and the outlay will be 432 Rand. There is that banker coming about in race and number five. That is the six which we'll touch on when we get there. All right, 12.40 is your off time to race number three. 1,400 meters is the trip to that first leg of the PA at Hollywood Bets at Kenilworth. And as you heard from Mr. Marie earlier on, the rain forecast was Saturday. Let's hope it doesn't have too much of an impact. Otherwise, it's a case of look for that uh, set of horses that like uh, the give in of the ground. And of course, unfortunately, with uh, these uh, juvenile races, not many have been exposed to too much underfoot conditions that are on the yielding side. However, the favorite in race number three is a two. That is a power and the glory in the colors of Mr. Nick Johnson. Richard Fury gets the ride. There's that cowboy form line that Mr. Marie touched on when we're talking race two. The three, Commander Green. Now, this is a half-brother to a likely race. Uh, Lincoln Navigator up here on the high field. That is at 5-1, to 11-2 and better by those. Could this be an omen? We spoke about uh, Mr. Verner's and uh, the Hero's Honor winning the derby. The uh, Verner's owner, Lincoln Navigator. Commander Green, that is the half sibling. Any thoughts on that, or are you going for the exposed form? Yeah, I've just gone with the race runners, yes. Okay. So I actually didn't have a look at that comment. Um, hoping for a forward run, number three, Commander Green. Okay. No, fairly upbeat. Greg Bortz um, for uh, Gareth Van Sale. Or Gareth Van Sale yeah, for Greg Bortz. Um, what's the situation there? I think JP's retained by Mr. Bortz. I don't know if he had the choice or if I he's. Wouldn't. Or if he has to ride for Justin. You know me and uh, conspiracy <laughs> theory. <laughs> yeah, that's, touch, that's let's, the department. It's touch on stated. Yeah. Um, I think he's way better than his last start. I'll mm -hmm. tell you why. In his penultimate start, he actually beat All Out for six. Mm -hmm. And last time out, he got beaten seven odd lengths. Mm -hmm. Must have been uh, below par effort on his behalf. Power and the glory. Mm -hmm. Double superlatives, brother. Half-brother, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, extremely well-related, steps up from 1,000 to 1,400. Um, watch out, watch out. Let's see how he goes. I think he'll sh certainly improve on from his debut efforts. I think the value in the race is number five, Western World. Um, debuted against winners over 1,000 meters. Another one stepping up to the 1,400. Made really good eye-catching Headway on debut, Cecil. He, he only found his stride very late, the <coughs> last 50. 
I think he's going to love the step up in top. Hopefully he's not too green around the bend. And he's so well related. He's damn placed, I think, in several graded races, including uh, the grade one Garden Province. I think she ran third. So, yeah, five, my first pick because of the price. I think uh, he is value around 61. Respect for the one and two. Respect for the one and two. Five, one and two. And uh, there is two and five in that uh, place accumulator for uh, Mr. Marie. As we uh, get to that first leg of the PA once again, 20 to one is the off time to race number three. All right, so if you're still uh, talking about uh, what uh, the events at uh, the uh, Hollywood Bets Cosmo Racetrack uh, did uh, to you and uh, how you benefited or uh, hard luck stories, do share them with us uh, via our X handle or our uh, Twitter account, uh, not our Twitter account as such, but our uh, WhatsApp number. Twitter, of course, uh, now X. So that is uh, race four, a juvenile plate over the 1400 meters. Small field, that does look competitive, but I dare say if I say the sixth Roman agent, who was prominent during the uh, Cape, recently concluded Cape season as your two to one favorite. Number three, World of Pleasure, four to one. Four to one is the four, kind of uh, wonderful. Now I have to touch on the one Mauritius Kestrel and uh, the five African Prince, the former, is uh, the same silks as uh, the winner of uh, the uh, big race on uh, Sunday where many people are still left reeling after Futurist's win. Uh, on a Sunday, I don't know what you made of the race. I don't even wish to hear. Because... <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, it's a competitive little field to start the big six. But have you got a bullish uh, choice here? Um, I think the market's wrong over here. Listen, uh -huh. don't get me wrong. I think um, Roman agent uh, is capable. Yes. I don't know if you recall, Alistair Cohen actually interviewed Grant after running third. Yes. Last time out. And Alistair said, yeah, nice effort uh, returning from a layoff, one to watch. And Grant said, no, he didn't give him the feel he wanted to, f to feel underneath him. So I think, um, let's see how he goes. He steps up in trip over here. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not entirely convinced. I think he's too short in the market. There's a, other, there's a few others that are probably coming through the ranks over here, namely the Philly, kind of wonderful. Now, irrespective of Symphony in White's performance at Scottsville on Saturday, yes. I think this filly has to be taken seriously. She, in her penultimate start over 1,200, very impressive. She now steps up to 1,400. She's a full sister to the grade two winning third runway, mm -hmm. who won the Western Cape Phillies Championship. Um, also, I think over 1,400. So... If she can settle and if she sees out the trip, I think she's with that sex allowance, she is has to be taken seriously over here. Cecil, um, Mauritius Kestrel, workman like uh, victory last time out, caught, he does get the 1400, he has to be considered. But I like the improvement number seven made last time, all out for six. I watched him in the straight, mm. 400 meters from home. Um, Ashton was already looking to switch him out. He was traveling so well beyond the, the leaders on that occasion. And I think he is, I think he could turn out to be something useful. So four from, four from seven, respect for the entire field. All right. That is uh, Daryl's suggested uh, pick six there. Eh? That is uh, going to be an outlay of 1,296 Rand. We should be off with race four at a quarter past one. All right, let's move on to race number five. This is a race caper powered by Hollywood Bets and made and played. They're going over the 1,600 meters and favoritism is with the Vaughan Marshall Stable with the six of Water Dragon in the colors of Mr. Bryn Resson in partnership with the Green Acres Trust nominee, Mr. Mark Shirtliff. And that is at two to one. Number three, Midway is at 22 to 10. Number five, Tsunami Warning is at 72. 10 to one is at the four at 12, the Filante. It's uh, 11 to 1 and a better bar those. Race number 5, a field of 9 at this time, Mr. Marie. It's off at uh, 10 to 2 with the first leg of the carryover jackpot. Let us remind you that it is the first leg of the carryover jackpot. And we're looking at uh, 1 million rand to come at 10 minutes to 2. Nice race. Um, betting suggests it's a three-cornered contest. I'm not mm -hmm. too convinced with Tsunami Warning's form lines. Mm -hmm. He's been contesting uh, open maiden races. I play, uh, well, I bank it of yeah, but I don't really fancy his chances. Mm -hmm. He could prove me wrong, Cecil. Um, 
Let's touch on Midway. Now, a lovely improvement after rest. Uh, Mr. Crawford will actually have a line of here because his horse, Aladdin's Lamp, mm -hmm. beat Water Dragon. Yes. And he's very likely raced. Let's see how he goes. He could certainly win this. Um, I'm just using a 12 for Lent as a line also here. I could mm -hmm. be way off the mark, but a 12 for Lent got beaten five lengths by Water Dragon. Yes. And got beaten three and a half lengths by Midway. So on a line through a 12 for Lent, Water Dragon could have the beating of uh, Mr. Crawford's horse Midway, but races aren't run on paper. But Cecil, touching on Water Dragon last month, he was towards the, the middle of the track. Mm -hmm. And the first two past the post on that occasion quickened way better towards the outside. Yes. And if you watch that race, once Ashton moved him, or I don't know if he hung or angled in to the, towards the outside, he really chased after them. So I think he's way better than that effort. Um, I think he's going to go very, very close to winning. And I bank at him in all my permutations on the day. All right, uh, Water Dragon, that is the, the banker for Mr. Marie. And uh, there it is, the jackpot, first jackpot, the six by one, three, four, by a number of horses, three, four, five, six, seven, and 11, and just the two horses at the back. And that is an outlay of a 36 Rand. That is for that carryover jackpot, starting race five at 10 minutes to two. Perfectly placed to class four. That will be race six. And this is the sixth of ten. So we're not into it, the second jackpot yet. That only starts in race number seven. There's over the thousand meters. And we step up to a field of eight for race number six. And your favorite right now is the one. She's my captain, 28 to 10. The four. Paolo Queen is at 72. 72 is the two. Love Shack. And then we're looking at 15 to four about the seven tequila sky before we get into double digits. Now, I don't know. The theory for me has always been when Richard decides to ride a She's My Captain <laughs> in particular, he feels that she's ready. Absolutely. I agree with you wholeheartedly there, Cecil. So, so you know, she's uh, she's visited the winner's enclosure four times in her career. With and Mr. all four have been with <laughs> Mr. Free aboard. So now he's taken the ride aboard her. Um, listen, she's a killer and a half better off with Palo Queen. On paper, there shouldn't be too much separating the two of them. I, might, I just want to add, Palo Queen last time out, Robert Carty booted home, start to finish. I, I love seeing Robert Wright winning winners. Yes. Um, yeah, he, I think he's one of the most underrated jocks. Yeah. No, no doubt about it. I mean, I've heard people that uh, are normally not so complimentary with their, uh, not so, so uh, known for their compliments. And I think uh, Robert Bloomberg, I speak under correction, he even said okay. the kid is underrated, just like you said. Oh, no, I... I I, I fancy his chances over here. She could certainly go back to back. I think the value lies with number three over here, Night Vigil. Um, I'll tell you why, Cecil. She should reverse the form with Lope Shack. She's two kilograms better off. But he, if you go back to the Kai Thera run, mm -hmm. she actually holds Palo Queen. And there's not too much between Palo Queen and she's my captain. Mm -hmm. So Night Vigil, without the headgear, could be a live boy here. I think, what price is she, Cecil? Night of Vigil is uh, currently trading at 10 to 1. 10 to 1 in a small 17 field. 17 to 10 a place. 17 to 10 a place. Worth a little nibble for Sunday lunch. Okay, that's... <laughs> 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 okay, there is that pick three. One, a three, four, including that uh, lunchtime snack. <laughs> and that is uh, Night of Vigil, Shane Humby. And uh, Louis Claude. Well, now Louis is not right. Would not have ridden at uh, Fairview on Friday. Let's hope he's up and uh, about for Sunday's race. All right, the biggest feature segment of our card at Hollywood Bets, uh, Kenilworth, that starts with race seven. This is a non-black type of winter sprint, and please be reminded it is the start of the second and the final jackpot of the afternoon. No carryovers on the second jackpot, but nonetheless worth uh, getting involved in. And uh, here we've got a biggish field with the six questioning horse back to winning ways last time out over a shorter trip at 33 to 10. Five Jerusalem and Rain, who did give a question a little bit of cheek. That is your second favorite at five to one. The seven Bereave, six to one. The 11, Rio Carrari, 11 to two, six to one. And better by those. Seems like an old boys reunion there. They all met the top four in the betting. Yes. Questioning Jerusalem, Rain, and Bereave, Rio Carrari, 
Mufasa. Uh, we could go on. Yeah, Cecil, just take note. Um, in the in the computer form, if you are looking at the silks, mm -hmm. number six questioning has changed ownerships. Oh, it's no longer the colors no, of the posters. No. Okay. Some heavy hitters uh, have uh, bought into him, uh, uh -huh. namely Mr. Bortz, uh -huh. Gujardia, uh -huh. Mr. Verners, and okay. there's a rose amongst the thorns in Gina Goldsmith. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, oh, so that's worth all the best yes, to them. I'm just looking now. Thank you for that. So, um, what are they? Are they the aquamarine, eh? They will be the aquamarine, a dark uh, grey seams, the uh, seams, the uh, colours we're so familiar with, with the boats uh, racing uh, concerns. Aquamarine sleeves, a dark green armour, bands and a striped cap. Yeah, so, so I actually like number six questioning up the straight. Mm -hmm. I think he's a really good sprinter. Um, loved his turn off foot. He showed up the inside last time out. Mm -hmm. uh, if he just produces a similar effort, I think he could certainly uh, make it win number five. Uh, Jerusalem rain, not too much separating himself and questioning alongside the old boy Rio Karari. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just want to touch on, okay, the best weighted in this race happens to bereave, be yeah. bereave Cecil. And if the rain does come, I actually prefer him with the sting out the ground. Mm -hmm. And I prefer him with a bit of cover. Last time out, he was, he didn't have, the race wasn't really run to suit him. He was exposed a long way out. So do watch for improvement from bereave. But if the rain comes, number four, we're jamming. Mm -hmm. Please throw him into your trifectas and quartets. Please, Cecil, he is more than capable. And I think I also like him up the straight. So listening, questioning, mm -hmm. um, I think he will be the one to beat. I'm looking for improvement from where jamming. Okay, okay. Race number seven, winter sprint, non-black type. And uh, that is over the 1200. Thank you so much to Daryl. It's at uh, three, four, five, six, seven, and 11. And of course, uh, do of course uh, keep an eye and an ear out for the underfoot conditions. Final reminder, well, I'll never ever tire of reminding you of our contact details, our X handle and our uh, number as far as the WhatsApp is concerned. Uh, we'll always be scrolling and uh, you have access uh, to the uh, big two, that is uh, Mrs. Uh, Daryl and uh, Darren. And of course, not forgetting the big man himself, uh, Clyde Basil. Somerset 1200, listen, the 2024 renewal. This is a field of eight, and hopefully it stays in that vein of the eight runners for this year's renewal. And favoritism is with the eight, Lion Rampart. Now, that winner won two runs back, and that beat Kaiboy, whose form lines have featured quite a lot in this preview. Number six, Talk to the Master, three to one, 11 to two, and a better bar those. Mr. Marie? I've be, had a very brief look at the betting, because I know you're going to give us a... Uh, Thorough analysis of race eight. Yeah, so, so we have to touch on one world. Now, obviously, Lion Rampart's by one world. Yes. He was beaten by one stripe last yes. time out. <laughs> by one world. You know, Mr. Marshall put his faith in one world uh, early on, and he's certainly reaping the, yes. the rewards. What a sire he's proving to be. Um, you know, Lion Rampart and Cowboy met. Yes. But it was Cowboy's debut. Yes. Okay. And he actually ran Lion Rampart to the line. Mm -hmm. The thing is now Cowboy is three kilograms worse off. But Cecil, who says um, he hasn't improved? Now, Lion Rampart with the blinkers, allowing him to stride is a different uh, sort. He, he really... Uh, got ex he did well to get within a length of one stripe last time out, who's, who's probably one of the best uh, juveniles we've seen. So I respect, I like Lion Rampart's uh, chances Yeah, I do have respect for Cowboy though, mm -hmm. despite the turnaround in the weights. I think he's a lovely sort. Um, like you said, let's see how the form lines work um, early on in the, in the day. Worldly, Bagatelli, Flash. Power and the glory. Further down in that race was a horse called Krim, mm -hmm. who got touched off in his next start. So although there aren't any direct winners, mm. there've been numerous placings. So um, I'm happy to box the exact over here. I think they're two very nice horses in the making. All right. So that is uh, the two and the eight. 
yes. to make sure that I've got you right. Right, so that is uh, the renewal of what is always an exciting uh, uh, event. That is uh, the listed uh, Somerset uh, 1200, the 2024 renewal. And just a reminder that the two, six, eight rather, Ryan Rampart is your favorite at two to one.